Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to talk about the longer 3D Orange 30 resin printer. That is the um, MSLA masking LCD SLA printer that I've been playing with. I have a whole bunch of prints here I'm going to show you and we're going to go over things. So stay tuned. Okay, so here we have the printer. Um, my only primary complaint is the cover. It's a pain in the butt to put together, but I have a fix for that. <laughs> um, when you, if you decide to grab this printer, and it is a pretty nice machine, first thing is make sure you have some clear packing tape available. Um, one of the cost savings on this machine, and that's important later, I'll explain, is that this comes in pieces that interlock, and you have these little bands here that hold it together. And it's a uh, it's fun to put together, <laughs> but if you have packing tape, it's easy. So what I do is I just packing taped all the corners together, every edge packing tape. Now no problem, this is fine. So I like the fact it's orange, but beyond that, not a problem. So we'll put that aside. That was the only trouble I had putting this together was that just a frustration of putting that together while I was on camera. If I wasn't on camera, I probably would have thought of the packing tape sooner. And a viewer mentioned the packing tape, but I didn't have any handy, so. I went out and bought a roll. Yeah. <laughs> so here is your machine. Now, there's right now there's basically two classes of this kind of machine. Um, and they all, except for Creality, they've all released it. You have the basic version and the pro version, or the I call it basic and advanced. So there are improvements that they made to all of their machines. Elio Mars has two versions. Um, and um Anycubic Photon has two versions. You have the Anycubic Photon, the Photon S, and you have the Eligo Mars and Eligo Mars Pro. Okay, this machine, uh, and they're priced about, mm, I want to say, fifty to one hundred and ten bucks differently. This machine has the price of the basic versions, but most of the features of the advanced version. So that explains some of the cost cutting they had to do to be able to do that. For example, this one has a relatively tall Z height. Some of the more basic models available have a shorter Z height. This model also has an actual linear rail in the back. So as you can see right there, there is an actual, there it is, there's an actual linear rail in the back there. I got resin in here, so I gotta be careful not to spill it. Now, it's got a relatively small touch screen, but it's pretty advanced in what it has. One other area where it's lacking um, not a huge deal, but it is an issue uh, that might, some people might find a problem is you can't adjust the settings of the print on the screen like you can with most other printers nowadays. Not a huge deal. I find that the burn times for this machine are incredibly forgiving. And the reason for that is because of the advanced features it includes. So the linear rail takes care of a lot of your Z wobble issues. It also has a tilted bed plate here. So this is your build plate. I don't want to disturb the resin, so I'm being gentle. So your bottom is, of course, flat, as you'd expect. Ooh, there's something on there. A little drop on there. But the side, as you can see, has a profile. There's actually too much light. I can't believe it. There we go. So you can see the profile right there. That is so... This will drain as it lifts up. So you don't end up with a pool of resin on top of here that you have to sit there and drain off. Most of that resin will drain off by the time your print is finished, which is actually really cool. I, I really like that. I think every single manufacturer should implement that immediately. It's just a great idea and it works. And the cat keeps jumping up at the window to get a fly or something. <laughs> uh, he's carnivorous for flies. He, if I knock an insect out of the air, he'll eat it instantly. No hesitation, he'll just eat it. <laughs> um, the... Another cost cutting is in the build plate, but it works very well. So this is a stamped steel plate with multiple pieces bolted together. So it's a little, it's not as nice as the aluminum cast or extruded or machined beds that you're used to seeing on some of the other printers, but it works. I have had zero failures except for when I push the limit of the burn time. It also has a matrix LED array for your curing. 
that's a big thing because you get nice even curing i'm able to really bring down the burn times to right within a fine edge of what will and won't work which allows you to do things like this very effectively mm -hmm. we'll get to that in a minute um but that matrix led is something you only get on the more advanced models the more expensive models from other manufacturers the power supply is an external brick like most of them the machine itself is silent the fans are a little noisy not bad i wouldn't consider it to be a big problem i wouldn't want to sleep in the same room as this for both noise and for resin reasons the one upgrade i suggest you do almost immediately is replace the thumb drive with the little little sh shorties that you can get from sandisk and the port is on the back but that little thumb drive means you won't have to worry about having a thumb drive sticking out of the machine, which inevitably you are going to whack it and break it off. So you stick this into the machine and almost nothing sticks out. Just that little shaped nub that you can still grab onto and pull out. And you can also put a little lanyard on there to make it easier to pull out. There's a little hole there for a lanyard. But they're like 5 or $6 on Amazon. So definitely buy that to upgrade the machine. Um, that's basically it. It does what every other machine does. Um, because of the matrix LED array, I can actually do 0.2 millimeter layers at reasonable burn times, even with an RGB screen. Um, so burn times are actually pretty fast. I was down to like five and a half, six seconds on some prints, and that's with a gray resin. So not freaking bad at all. I am now going to move the camera and give you guys some close-ups of some of the prints that I've made with this machine. So hold on. Okay, focus is going to be a bit of an issue, but we will work with it. So this is a test print that came with it. It's a, some kind of fancy bracket, which I thought was pretty cool. I actually like the way they designed this. I would like to design more of my own stuff like this, just because it's pretty. And here is one tiny. Come on. There we go. Not only is this tiny, this is at low resolution. All of these prints are at 0.2 millimeter layer height, which when you think about that, that's pretty impressive for something this small printing at such a coarse layer height. And of course we printed Marvins. So here is the Spartan Marvin. There we go. You can see how absolutely clean that is, even at a coarse 0.2 millimeters. Look at that. You can really see those layers on top there. Look at that. And they're just so perfect. That's just awesome. Here's your Yoda Marvin. I gotta create enough of a background for it so it'll focus. You can see the little jaggies from the 0.2 millimeter layers on the scaled down model. It's really cool looking. There you go, there you can see the layers. Look at that, look how perfect they are. That is just a neat way to print something. These were of course all washed in the Anycubic wash station and cured. Now here's our Marvin group. Come on, autofocus. Work with me. There we go. Very, very nice. Slight elephant, elephant's foot. My first layer's burn time were a little too high. Optimus Prime Marvin. Those are the actual polygons in the model. Those aren't ZI deviations. This one has been decimated a bit. So there are actual polygons in the sphere. And you are seeing those polygons. I have the stones from the fifth element. These almost didn't print. They were, as you can see, this tiny gap. They're so the walls are so thin that it almost, I would almost call that a fail. But they did finish. You can even see the little details the modeler put in there for the rock face. Those aren't imperfections. Those 
try to make it look like rock stone. Another one that came with it, this is your um, vampire hunter or zombie hunter. You guys see him a lot on these resin printers. Drain holes that I put in there to make sure I can drain him. And again, 0.2 millimeter layer height. So really impressive when you consider how coarse the layer height is. This is some kind of a demon lord. He did have some supports. I popped them off. You can see there were supports on the bottom there. Pretty cool. I like how they integrated the spikes on his chest. And they also function as supports for his chin. That's pretty smart on the part of the modeler. Person, whoever designed this model. Pretty neat. How about a little roll of toilet paper? <laughs> Just because... So this is my, my, the giant roll of toilet paper I made, but I made it super tiny, just because. <laughs> this is the um, Skull Trooper, the Storm Trooper with a skull inside the helmet. I left the support on this one so you can see that. There's your support matrix. There we go underneath the model. Most of these will probably remove by hand, maybe. I don't know. I haven't tried yet. I pr you, normally you remove these before you cure them. Yeah, that just popped off. Um, but I left these on for demonstration purposes so you guys could see that. Come on, autofocus. Get it. There we go. This thing really does not like focusing this close. These are your three skulls. There we go. So, see no, hear no, say no. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Of course, your Benji. And again, this is at 0.2 millimeters. So a very coarse resolution, especially considering this scale. And you can see it is virtually perfect. Because of my overexposure on the bottom, you lost the details on the bottom there. You can see there's the hashtag 3D Benchy on the back. I don't know if you can read that. The roof, the staff. Really, cat? You're gonna go after that moth and tear apart my blinds? I'm gonna kick your butt. <laughs> they like going after these moths. <laughs> There's your wheel inside. Very cool. Then I thought this was neat. This actually another what ten days? We'll be launching astronauts from U.S. soil once again using SpaceX's dragon capsule so here is the dragon upper stage and you can see all the little tiny details come on autofocus there we go super super fine details even at 0.2 millimeter layer height just a beautiful print i want to make a little micromax falcon 9 using this as the nose cone very cool and the last one, before I go to big size, this is Notre Dame. Now keep in mind, this is at 0.2 millimeters, so this is a very coarse resolution for this model. I broke off a couple points, they were there, but I stored this in a jar, so all these little points got broken off. That was my bad. <laughs> I should not have done that, but they did originally print Come on, there we go. That is just a nice print. And now let me show you the big one. 
So, the big print. This one took me a couple tries to do. I tried to print it in place. That was just not going to work. So, what I ended up doing was printing out the sword. Well, first of all, I had to chop off the sides in order to fit the build volume. But I was able to actually extend the length bigger than the um, original model. Which means it fits my hand. Because I have very big hands. And um, what I did was I lopped off the top of the model. And I printed the parts separately. But I didn't print them one at a time. No, what I did was I just removed every other one. So the first one printed this plus all the odd pieces, even pieces. And then the second print was the cap for the top of the sword and all of the odd, um, um, odd pieces I printed. So even with that odd with this, and that gap was big enough that nothing fused together. So I only had to use two prints. And then once you, the big part of this was cleaning it because you got to get all the resin out of the insides of these tubes. Otherwise, you're just going to pull resin when they insert into each other. Again, printed at 0.2 millimeter. And um, the other thing was curing it because the wash station did very good at curing the outside, but it can't get to the inside. Turns out once I've cleaned it off enough with alcohol, fresh alcohol, I just put it out in the sun. And that appeared to do the trick. It's nice and clean now with no residue on the inside of the pieces. Pieces. I do still need to sand it down a little bit to um, make the transition a little smoother. It works very well, but I'm always afraid of breaking it. This is a 50-50 mixture of tenacious and um, fast. So that it's a little tougher than normal resin prints. So it holds up. But the cool thing right now, I'm going to put my finger on the back here because I didn't put the cap on yet. But this works. So there is your collapsible pirate sword. How cool is that? At super, super fine resolution. Really, really nicely detailed. Whoop! I heard it coming in. And there you go. It collapsed back down again. I could probably go like that and collapse it. I'm just afraid of breaking it because that's a, that's a lot of money right there. <laughs> that's an expensive print and I really don't want to destroy it. So I'm going to not do that but i'm very very happy with that i was thinking about printing these little parts i cut off and then just gluing them back on but i kind of like it like this so i will leave it like that that's it but there you go that's a full almost a full build height volume print on the orange 30 which came out very impressively i actually had um zero oh, i almost forgot to show you my little my little Flippy thingy. <laughs> That's a little micro version of my little um, virus hook <laughs> for opening doors and crap like that. But um, yeah, besides when I was doing test prints to see how short I could make the burn time, because obviously if you keep doing that, eventually you're going to make the burn time too short and the part will fail. But that's because I'm pushing the edge. When I wasn't pushing the edge, zero failures in all the prints I did. None. Not one single failure. So that's impressive. It works very, very well. They did a good job on the design of this machine. They did a good job of balancing features and price. So this machine is cheaper than the advanced models, but has most of the features of the advanced models. You get the beveled shape. You get the linear rail for the Z-axis. You get the matrix LED array for the emitter on the bottom which really does make a pretty big difference, especially when you try to do... I wish I had them here. I tried to find them. I couldn't find them, but I did Flexi-Rexes and Butterflies at 25% scale, and they work. <laughs> the print-in-place joints work, and I could not find them. I don't know what I did with them. I have, a, I have a stack of them. I have a whole bunch of them that I did, but um, this is the first printer where I could print multiple print-in-place parts, and they all work. That's because of the matrix LED array. So you're going to get similar results on the Creality Machine, the uh, AnyCubic S, and the Elio Mars Pro. Um, on their basic models, you're going to have a little more trouble with those because without the matrix LED array, you have a point source light in the middle that sprays out like this. And what ends up happening is the light in the middle is stronger than the light on the edges. So you'll fine-tune your print for the middle, but then your edges will be not enough light and they won't print. 
where you'll fine tune for the edges and then your center will be overexposed. When you're printing stuff like this, that doesn't matter. Um, when you're printing stuff with print in place joints, it matters a lot. <laughs> but um, in general, very impressed. I think it's a good value for the money. I would give it a safe to buy. It does appear to use the same screen as the rest of the manufacturers use. So the same replacement screen should work with this one as well. Um, beyond that, if you have any questions, ask down below and I will do my best to answer. I will see you guys later.